Hey guys, what's up? It's Rachel and welcome back. And today I am going to be doing the Draw My Life video. This is the surprise for you guys for 1 million subscribers. I still can't believe we hit 1 million. It's so crazy to me. So thank you guys so, so much. Sending lots of love and big hugs your way. And now without further ado, let's hop right into it. I was born April 24th, 1998 to my mom, dad, and older brother. My older brother's name is Chris and he is three years older than me. He just graduated from UC Davis with a degree in computer science, which big congrats to him. We've always been very, very close ever since we were little kids. I would always try to play video games with him. And even though I was pretty terrible at video games and still am, I always had a great time bonding with him and we just have a really great friendship. Moving on to elementary school, I was known for being really, really, really shy. I never raised my hand in class, I never participated. I was still a good student, but I just didn't really speak up. In contrast to my shyness, I was really goofy with my friends, especially my best friend Anna. Literally anything would make us just crack up, and that friendship just taught me how to goof around and just have fun being a little quirky or a little bit weird. Sadly though, soon enough we were put in different classes, so we didn't get to hang out as much and we gradually grew apart. Not with any kind of animosity or anything, it just kind of naturally happened that way. I don't really remember the timeline of my other elementary school friendships that well, but I do remember the time we had all my friends came up to me at recess and told me they didn't want to be friends with me anymore. As you might imagine, I was sad, embarrassed, confused. It came as a complete surprise to me. I'm still not really sure why that happened, but since I was so shy, it really did hurt my self-esteem because it was hard for me to be outgoing and make new friends. So that was a tough time in elementary school for me. After that event, I turned to one of my favorite hobbies, which was reading. Every day during recess, snack time, you name it, I would sit on a bench by myself and just read. To me, reading really was an escape and it just helped me be somewhere that wasn't on that playground sitting by myself. Looking back, although that year was lonely at times, I am thankful for it. It taught me to love reading, which is something I still carry with me today. I read every morning and every night, and it's just a big part of my life. And that year also taught me how to be alone, but not lonely. Since I loved reading so much, I actually didn't mind just sitting on a bench and reading by myself. I wasn't the only kid that was into doing that kind of stuff. So it just taught me that even though I was shy and quiet and relatively friendless at the time, I didn't have to let that bring me down. Luckily for me though, in third grade, a new student came to our school and his name was Bentry. We became really close friends and the best thing about him was that he loved reading too. And every single day during recess, we would just sit on a bench and read together. Besides reading, we also just like to joke around and chat. I recently found an old diary where I talked about how Bentry would just make me laugh until I couldn't breathe. And I also commented that I liked his handwriting. I was a real charming kid, but I love that friendship and I will always be grateful for it. And just a little side note, I might have also kind of had a big crush on Bentry. I had a feeling that he liked me too, but I couldn't really tell for sure. And now we have arrived at everybody's favorite time in life, middle school. It was kind of an awkward time, but I did love my friends. Since our middle school merges three different elementary schools, I was just exposed to more people and I made friends that way. To be completely honest, not a whole lot happened in middle school, except for starting my YouTube channel, which is a pretty big thing. I was 12 years old at the time, and I really wanted to enter a cute tan popo's crafting contest. I was so into making these polymer clay charms, so I made some for the contest, posted the video on my brand new channel called Kawaii Sweet World, and unfortunately I did not win the contest, but that's okay. I just kept posting videos because I found a crafting community online, and I just fell in love with it. I was making videos like weekly, just having a great time, and it was just a hobby of mine at that point. On that note, let's move on into high school. High school was a really huge changing point in my life. Before high school, I would consider myself still relatively shy. I was getting more outgoing with YouTube and posting videos. And then also teachers started grading class participation. And at first I absolutely hated that. I did not like participating, but then eventually I started raising my hand in class more often. I started speaking up more and I realized that there's really not a whole lot to be afraid of. So that in combination with posting videos really helped foster my confidence. And with that growth and self-esteem, I pursued more opportunities in high school. And overall, I see my high school experience as divided into four different categories. First of which was Key Club. If you're not familiar with Key Club, it's basically a community service organization. It's also international, so a lot of schools have a Key Club. So in freshman year, I ran for and was elected secretary of Key Club. Then in sophomore to junior year, I was vice president. 
And then in junior to senior year, I was president of Kia Club, actually. I also decided to run for a position on the division level, basically meaning it pertains to the 14 schools in my area. So I applied for the position of executive assistant to the lieutenant governor, and I ended up getting that too, which was really cool. And just a quick side note, I definitely don't mean to cite all these things as a means of bragging or showing off or anything. That is 100% not my intention. I just wanted to show you guys the growth from elementary school to high school because I want you to know that if you are shy or quiet or if you don't have the confidence to pursue leadership opportunities, I believe that you can grow and that you can do it because if I can do it, then you can do it. Anyways, I just wanted to clarify that really quick. But back to the story, Key Club was a huge part of high school for me. I devoted so many weekends and so many hours to it, but I loved it because I got to spend time with my friends on the weekends while still doing something productive and good for the community. Another big part of high school for me was ballet. I'd been doing ballet ever since I was about five or six years old, and I went to ballet class twice a week and I absolutely loved it. It was just a great way to get some exercise and just kind of take my mind off of school and that kind of stress. Also, you can probably tell our studio is definitely a lot more relaxed than most ballet studios since you do only go in two to three times a week, but that was perfect for me and perfect for my schedule. So overall, I love ballet, I loved our performances. In middle school, I got to be Clara in the Nutcracker, and then it kind of came full circle in high school because in my senior year, I got to be Sugar Plum Fairy, which was super fun, and I have been really missing doing ballet during my gap year, but overall, ballet is awesome, I loved it. And then the next big chunk of high school for me was, of course, YouTube. This is the category that you guys know the most about, though. So essentially, I just posted more videos in high school. I was learning to get more comfortable on camera and just be myself. And I've noticed that a lot of you guys comment on seeing a big difference from when I first started posting videos to now. And those comments always make me smile. Because if you had told me way back when in like elementary school that I was going to be a YouTuber and posting videos to like over a million people, I would have thought that you were crazy because I was so shy starting off. And then the last really big part of my life in high school was the schoolwork. I went to a regular public school that was relatively competitive, so grades were always my first priority. I pretty much liked all of my classes, except for probably PE and actually art class I wasn't that good at, but overall I've always liked school and learning. And then at the end of senior year, my school holds a senior award ceremony where they basically give out a certificate and a trophy for each subject. And I got the trophies for Mandarin and computer science. I was pretty happy, but just a warning, don't go try to speak Mandarin to me because I'm not very good at it. I think I got that trophy more so due to effort and trying to speak Mandarin more than actually being good at speaking Mandarin. Anyways though, overall, high school for me was all about time management. There was a lot of stuff to do between Key Club and ballet and YouTube and schoolwork, but in the end, it was totally worth it to me, and I definitely don't regret it. And now this is a great segue into the end of high school, when I had the happiest day of my life. The day I got accepted to Stanford is the only day I remember where I have actually cried tears of joy. I remember running upstairs to show my brother and my mom and my dad, and that day we just all celebrated, and it felt like the culmination of everything that I've worked on in my life. The reason this moment was so, so important to me wasn't really that it's because Stanford's a top school or it's a good university or anything. It was mostly because I thought of how much I sacrificed for that acceptance. To be honest, I was really stressed out in high school. I wasn't getting enough sleep, and outside of Key Club, I essentially never spent time with my friends. So getting that acceptance just felt like validation of the fact that hard work does pay off. And to me, that temporary sacrifice in high school was 100% worth it. But of course, you can have a great college experience anywhere, and just to give you an idea of how crazy college admissions can be, I got into Stanford, but I was waitlisted at UC San Diego. It really can be all over the place, so don't put too much weight into it. Just do your best and leave it at that. And then also, a little side note, it turns out that back in elementary school, Bentry actually did have a crush on me too. We actually started dating the summer before senior year, and now we have been dating for over two years, and it's going great. Only thing is that he goes to this school called UC Berkeley. I don't know if you've heard of it. It's this like little school in the Bay Area or something, but it does happen to be Stanford's number one rival. I guess it's okay though, and I guess I can let it slide. And now we're basically at present day. The only other thing that's happened is me deciding to take a gap year before I'm going to Stanford in the fall. And I just did that so I could work on my YouTube channel and then also serve as the hashtag bake a change ambassador for She's the First. 
But that is basically my life so far at 19 years old. I hope you guys have enjoyed watching this video and just getting to know me a little bit better. And if you take anything from this video, I hope it's this. Be patient with yourself. When I was younger and I was so shy, I didn't have confidence, I didn't have a lot of friends, I thought that was my life and that's who I was going to be. I desperately wanted to be more outgoing, but the truth is it just took time. And if I could go back and talk to elementary school Rachel, I would say to her, be patient, you're going to grow into yourself. In the meantime, just be kind to yourself and know that there are concrete things that you can do to really flex that confidence muscle. For me, that meant doing things that I loved, which was Key Club and ballet and YouTube, learning to speak up in small ways, even if that meant my goal was to raise my hand one time in one class, and spending time with people that made me feel good and supported. And that can be people online or offline. Watching inspirational videos and hearing people's stories really motivates me, and I'll be sure to leave kind of my inspiration resources down below. And that is basically it, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I had a lot of fun doing this, and I hope you guys enjoyed watching it, and I'll see you all back here very soon. Bye, guys!